So the, uh, the purpose of the investigation of um, uh, deuterium depleted uh, water was to see if it can produce any radioprotective effects. Uh, there's a little story behind this. Uh, I was studying for the PhD uh, the radio protection. So, and the idea was that I had to find a substance which hasn't been tested yet, which might have a radio protective effect. And at a certain point, I have uh, I was able to read. I was able to read. Uh, a paper concerning the so-called radiomimetic effects of heavy water. It means uh, a prolonged administration of heavy water would produce effects similar to those produced by uh, ionizing radiation. So I said, if there is such a tool like the deuterium depleted water, why don't I try to use it to see if it might protect against radiation? For the very beginning, there's a few things that have to be remembered concerning the effects of ionizing radiation. How does radiation kills? It kills by producing what you call water radiolysis. So it breaks down water and produces oxidative products that further will act on the usually cellular membrane of, tish of uh, cells and will produce uh, various uh, deleterious effects. Of course, molecular lesions on various enzymatic systems of the cell or of the tissue or, or of the organism DNA lesions, strand lesions, which are um, responsive for the mutational effects, uh, responsive for the uh, uh, neoplastic uh, effects of uh, ionizing radiation. Immune suppression, which everybody knows, it will destroy all fast proliferating tissues in the, in the organism, thus producing immune suppression by suppressing the bone marrow, the hematogenic bone marrow, and the stem cells, which uh, uh, out of which the immune cells arise. And hematogenic bone marrow suppression, which will produce uh, subsequent anemia, lymphopenia, thrombopenia, and whatever other accidents might produce. And finally, the so-called radio-induced apoptosis. So if, if we uh, had this tool, the, uh, uh, we know that the normal ratio is 140-45 uh, parts per million, uh, the alteration can go towards the increase, producing the heavy waters, or towards the depletion, and this would produce some biological effects. So if there are any biological effects, you, we know that radiation induces death by the so-called hematological syndrome, by pancytopenia, so reduction of all cells in the blood, and by immune suppression. And it also produced by the so-called gastrointestinal syndrome, Gastrointestinal mucosa is the fastest developing, the fastest proliferating um, tissue in the organism. So because of the radiation, it's going to die, it's going to, it's going to slow off, and it's going to produce mucus atrophy, atrophy, ulceration, fistulae, infections, which further are going to kill the experienced animal or the uh, person which gets irradiated. So let's see how any radioprotective effects can be uh, seen. We are going to investigate if there is any antioxidant mechanism. So we have tried to test the antioxidant enzyme activity. We have tried to see if there is any lipid peroxidation or increased or decreased lipid peroxidation. And also we would see if there is any stimulation of cell proliferation which will help the organism to replace, to replenish its depleted cells after the radiation. And this would produce the immune stimulating actions, and we could test the immune stimulating actions by immunologic screening, by immune modulation evaluation, and by inducing experimental infections in animals, irradiated or not. And also, if we want to see if there is any stimulation of cell proliferation by the replacement of the uh, normal culture media with culture media reconstituted with deuterium depleted water, we could see if there is any stimulation of cultured cells, and we use splenic immune cells in culture, and we also try to test some membrane mechanisms which might have been involved in the proliferation. What have we done? So first, let's see if there is any variation, true variation, in organisms that have received deuterium depleted water. Now, the liter literature says that after two weeks of continuous administration of water, 
the whole amount of water in the organism is going to be exchanged. So it means we have to give at least two weeks, 15 days, maybe 20 days of water in order to produce the depletive effect. So what did we do? We gave to rats for a long time and then we uh, sacrificed those rats and we took blood, we took uh, samples from muscle, samples from liver and so on. And then we distilled all the water from those tissues and we tested by mass spectrometry the uh, content in deuterium of the biological fluids. This was made in several opportunities in the university, in the physics departments of the university in Yashi in Romania. And what have we observed? We have observed that no matter how long we gave the water, the deuterium depleted water, 30 ppm, no matter how long we gave it, we could not deplete the deuterium less than around 90%, uh, 90 ppms. So this is the, the control, yeah, the normal concentration around 144, 45 parts per million. And after receiving two, three weeks of water exclusively, this water, we could reduce the concentration in the muscle and in the liver for about 90 uh, party, parts per million, which is a, a good effect, uh, but it also means that we cannot reduce very much the deuterium concentration in the organism. Now, the radiation survival test used uh, 380 animals, Swiss male mice, during two years in several stages. So they usually received exclusively dry chow and then uh, uh, deuterium depleted water or distilled water ad libitum, so they, have, they drank as much as, want, as they wanted. Uh, the uh, groups received uh, uh, 27 to 30 p uh, parts per million compared to the control groups with normal water. Nutrition and hydration for minimally 14 days before irradiations. We had two test groups, so uh, the one group that received deuterium depleted water before and after irradiation and receiving deuterium depleted water only before, only, uh, before irradiation and after we did not give it anymore. And we also tried to do a third group, so receiving deuterium depleted only after irradiation, but this had no effects. Total body irradiation was made with uh, gamma radiation from a cobalt device, and also we made a control group using a so-called chemical radiomimetic, so a chemical substance which acts as the radiation. It's called hydrochloric embihine, and it's a nitrogen mustard derivative. Everybody knows what is nitrogen mustard, a very highly poisonous uh, substance. Radiation doses varied between 6.5 to 9.5 gray, and this is the LD50 for mice, yeah? And also we used auxiliary control groups using the traditional radio protector, which is called amifostine. It's a sulfhydric uh, sulfur, uh, um, derivative, which is um, used now. What have we observed? We have a true uh, statistically significant survival for those groups, you can see here, yeah? And these are the probits for the, uh, for the survival. So we had a 55 survival, 55 average survival after the radiation in mice, and then we have an 80% and 78% in group one and group two. So it means that giving deuterium depleted water at least two weeks before irradiation would increase this survival. And also, we have used several groups combining this with amifostine, yeah? So you can see here it has received deuterium depleted water, amifostine, deuterium depleted water. And you can see that the combination with the chemical radio protector does not produce any significant effects. This means there is no additive or synergistic effects, not even an additive effect. So it means probably they don't work using the same effects. We know that amifostine is a uh, free radical scavenger, so which takes uh, the free radicals out of the solution, and the prob probably the deuterium depleted water uh, functions using completely other, other ways. So, compared 
However, to the administration of hydrochloric ambihene, we have observed that the test group here above has a significantly increased uh, survival compared to the control group. So it means that even the chemical radiomimetic was, so the mice were protecting, protected against the chemical radiomimetic. So we see here the, the effects, and we were able to calculate also the dose modification factor, the DMF, the dose modification factor, is a numeric uh, quantification of the cap uh, capability of reducing the dose. The DMF was 1.41. Okay, so administered together with a known chemical radio protector, it does not significantly increase survival. The lack of any synergistic or additive effect between the deuterium depleted water and amiphosine suggests that their action mechanisms are not different or that radiation protection has a maximum which cannot be overcome. It's also an idea which is not mine, which is of, of the greatest professor in the uh, Walter Reed Army Institute that say at a certain point, never mind how much biological screening we do, we cannot protect the animal or human organism against uh, ionizing radiation completely. So we were not able to save it. The calculation of the dose modification factor is an average DMF of 1.41. This is not huge compared, for example, with the DMF of amiphosine, 1.81. But we have to know that amiphosine is a substance which is highly toxic, and it has to be administered absolutely in the first minutes after the radiation in order to have some effects. And we cannot give it for a very long time because as a sulfhydrilic derivative is highly vasodilator and uh, hepatotoxic and so on and so on. So it will protect us against the, uh, some effects of radiation, but then it will kill us by destroying the liver. So. Uh, I'll take anyway this way because it's not so toxic. So, what have we seen? We looked at the intestinal mucosa to see in the control group we have ob observed what we call necrotizing enteritis with cytolysis and loss of microvilli. So the surface, the internal lining of the intestine, of the small intestine is completely slowed off. So it means that the cells have been destroyed here, and they are going to be eliminated, and they will leave <coughs> holes in the mucosa of the intestine, which will produce ble uh, bleeding diarrhea. It will leave openings into the intestine for the microbes to get uh, inside, and on the, let's say, uh, on the background of immune depression produced by the radiation will produce septicemia, and the animal will die. However, when we look in the, uh, the deuterium depleted water treated group that receives 7.5 grays of gamma radiation, we see that there are some mucus ulcerations, but it keeps the microvilli and the amount of necrosis is less. So it means some way, somehow, the, uh, the small bowel has been protected by this ingestion in a way or another. We looked at also at the liver. So what have we observed? In the group which has received normal water, we see the loss of normal architectures and we see areas of necrosis and apoptosis. This does not look like a normal liver at all. We see here shrinking cells, yeah, signs of apoptosis. Yes, we don't see the lobuli, which uh, have to look normally. And we see that in the group B, it will keep the normal architecture and it won't keep the necrosis. We see the central lobular capillaries here. So also the hematogenic bone marrow. So we cut a little the, the bones and we made slides out of them and what have we seen? We have seen the loss of cellularity. Excuse me. We've seen the loss of cellularity so it means it loses cells. These are bone marrow blood cell precursors which uh, were kept. We tried to test the antioxidant mechanisms. We have observed, so I don't have the time to continue this, but we have seen reduced and statistically significant increase of superoxid dismutase activity in liver and no effect in brain. 
malon aldehyde, which is a marker for peroxid, uh, for lipid peroxidation, the, is sign significantly lower than brain and no changes in liver. Insignificantly reduced glutathione and total thiol gr groups, which seems that overall deuterium depleted water does not seem to have antioxidant effects. So probably it, wo it does not work this way. So let's see in the immunologic screening. At the first level, we have tested the hematologic aspect by uh, counting the RBCs and WBCs, by checking the leukocyte formula. Then we also tested the uh, T lymphocytes counting with the B lymphocyte countings, and also the phagocytosis analysis, the peripheral blood neutrophil phagocytosis assay, peritoneal macrophages and serum complement. Uh, the testing is not so difficult. In fact, it's just taking some uh, quantified samples of microbes and then they put it in contact with, uh, with serum from the animals. And then you uh, seed them on another tube. And if they have been destroyed, they will grow slower. If they haven't been destroyed, they will, not, uh, they will grow in a normal way. So what have we observed? Oh, sorry, excuse me that the phagocytosis in the peripheral blood is increased. ASD is Romanian for um, deuterium depleted water. Serum complement activity is also increased, yeah? And also the phagocytic capacity is increased by seeing the remaining colony forming units of bacteria that we have used as controls. So the, the remaining is much less reduced. It means they have been killed by the uh, macrophages, yes, the macrophages from the peritoneum, which is a very good thing, which means that the organism is able to defend itself against various types of infections. So, also, the group receiving two weeks presented significantly higher leukocyte count than the control group. The absolute values are not high enough to suggest leukocytosis, so they're not high enough to suggest that it will have a, an effect similar to an inflammation. The uh, feeding with the deuterium depleted water for a couple of weeks did not significantly influence the number of T lymphocytes. The number and activity of B lymphocytes was a little increased, but not significantly thus. However, it stimulated the phagocytic capacity of polymorphonuclears in the peripheral blood and of the peritoneal macrophages. So they are all significantly increased. This is the effect that I've been telling you about. Now we tried some standard cell cultures. Unlike that, the, the results that we have uh, observed earlier, what have we observed? So we tried three types of cells that we had available at the time. So it was uh, mouse uh, renal adenocarcinoma, uh, mammary adenocarcinoma, also from mouse, and normal fibroblasts. So what have we done? We have uh, used the completely normal cell culturing techniques with the difference that the RPMI medium that we used was reconstituted, it was powdered media, and then we reconstituted with various concentrations of deuterium depleted water. And what have we observed? We have observed that for the first three, four days, uh, the cell count and the, cell uh, the population doubling time and the population doubling levels have increased significantly. Now look how, does, how do the cells grow, yes, with 90 parts per minute, uh, per million compared to the normal. So they grow both uh, neoplastic tissues, so adenocarcinoma, uh, renal adenocarcinoma and mammary adenocarcinoma, and the fibroblast with a completely different configuration of the curve, however. So for example, how, do, how does it look? Yes, after 48 hours, it's also almost confluent after 48 hours, while we have only the normal doubling in normal water, this normal fibroblast, so mouse fibroblasts. The population doubling levels were significantly increased and the population doubling times were significantly decreased. It means they have, um, uh, they grow faster. Yeah, that uh, is uh, the, the population doubling time quantifies the uh, proliferation speed. Also, what have we done? 
We had uh, mice, as we call them, naive, so not immunologically challenged. We have sacrificed them. We have harvested uh, splenocytes, and then we uh, put them under the stimulation of chemical triggers like uh, bacterial lipopolysaccharide and concanavalin A, and these will stimulate the growth of the cells. And of course, in a specific medium, and this medium was deionized water and deuterium depleted water. What have we observed? That the groups that have received concanavalin A and deuterium depleted water were growing very fast compared to the control. The control here is among this violet color. And the LPS also was increased, so the group that received lipopolysaccharide increased the concentration or the uh, proliferation of the native splenocytes. So what are the conclusions of this experiment? Cell proliferation is significantly stimulated. Effect observed both in normal cells and in neoplastic cells. Growth of me and metabolism of splenocytes was stimulated in both groups, but in case of the LPS was not statistically significant. <laughs> However, using concanavalin A as proliferation stimulus for the native uh, splenocytes, we have observed a, significantly, a significant stimulation, especially in high doses. Now, we have thought uh, what d might produce this and we have thought exactly the same idea of Dr. Shomlis here. Uh, it has to do something with uh, proton transport in the membrane. So what have we do, uh, did? We put a specific inhibitor that we call amylorid, that we know is amylorid, inhibitor of sodium proton pump. In the growth media, we have observed no significant changes. So a single uh, cell type had growth and proliferation rates similar between the two, but not statistically significant. However, I've read somewhere that it might be a uh, predominance of what we call amyloid resistance uh, NHE3 channels. So it means that it's useless, the substance that we tried. However, in what we have studied is the probability the, that the antiport, proton, uh, proton sodium antiport, is not involved in those changes which might increase the alkalinity of the cells. We tried to do another blocker, a blocker of potassium hydrogen a, a blocker, which is called lansoprazole and is usually used for treating ulcer because it also produces, it also blocks the proton pump in the stomach and reduces the acid concentration in the gastric juice. So we use that substance. And what we have observed, we have observed that it practically reduced completely the difference between the control and the deuterium depleted water uh, cultures. So there is no difference anymore between those two. It means it has completely abolished the effect of deuterium depletion. How does it do it? Probably suggests an involvement of the proton potassium antiport in the mechanism that stimulate deuterium induced cell proliferation. We don't know how, uh, how it's done because it had to be continued, but we did not have the resources anymore. A very good idea would be to try to test using a patch clamp experiment to see if the current flow from one side to another is impaired in any way. But patch clamp experiments are quite expensive and they need a lot of expertise and machines, so we were not able to perform them. So, what are the conclusions? Deuterium depleted water is an efficient modality of reducing concentration of deuterium in animals subjected to prolonged treatment. Decreased to approximately 90 parts per million and no prolongation was able to further decrease it. The long time uh, treatment significantly protects animal against it. However, it has to be given before the irradiation. The association with the most powerful chemical radio protector did not significantly increase the effects of uh, the diet. The histological aspects suggest protective effects of, uh, against radiation-induced cellular depletion. The investigation showed that antioxidant is present but not strong enough. Most important action was the stimulation of nonspecific immunologic parameters. Proliferation was significantly stimulated, 
and the Antiport does not seem to be involved. However, the ATPs might be involved in these mechanisms. We have made a few other effect, uh, we have a few other experiments, you know, kind of a hobby. And what have we observed? Unsystematic data using biomass growth evaluation for Elodea canadensis. Elodea canadensis is a plant uh, which we uh, use in aquariums. And water sales from the Pomacea group have shown statistically significant mass increase. Ouch. Something. Ah, mistake. S uh, statistically significant mass increase while aquarium water was reconstituted with deuterium depleted water. So truly the deuterium depletion increases uh, growth rate and uh, speed. The exact reverse example that was uh, demonstrated by the professor here when uh, he showed us that heavy water stunts growth while the deuterium depleted water stimulates growth. However, what we have observed in the snails grown in deuterium depleted reconstituted media, we have observed the so-called hepatopancreatic hypertrophy, which is a phenomena characteristic to neoplastic growth types in invertebrates. And this might caution us in administration in patients with cancer. I'm not an oncologist. Uh, I never tr uh, gave it to patients with uh, cancer. It has a f f uh, very good effect out of what I read and from stories. It's absolutely uh, true that uh, cancer treatment with deuterium depleted water seems to be real. However, it has to be made in a discriminate way because otherwise it might, let's say, uh, stimulate perhaps uh, not growth of the primary tumor, but however, who knows what effect it might have on metastasis and whatever other uh, changes induced by the cancer. So uh, the final words after this presentation is uh, we truly have to investigate deuterium depletion <coughs> using this tool because it's something of a very big future. There is something here, everybody feels it, and everybody would want to see it done. So let's hope this symposium is the first step towards increasing the possibilities of the research. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions or comments, please? please? I have three questions. First, uh, when you use the radiation using mice, can we say that uh, cancer patients who are receiving radiotherapy, they should drink deuterium depleted water to, oh, yes. to protect the healthy cells? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was. Uh, I've seen it. I, I've seen it done, and it truly reduces the effects of radiotherapy okay. of uh, cobalt radiotherapy okay. or betatron. The uh, next question: uh, ha Have you tried to use uh, mice with cancer and uh, make some radiation? No, whether no there is some. I had some no possibility of uh, to finding immune suppressed mice in order to produce. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, we cannot say whether there is some no. synergy between no, radiotherapy no, and no, cancer. No, no, we can no, say I that radiotherapy, so the DDW can protect against radiotherapy, protect against but radiation. we cannot say whether there is any, okay. I, I, I don't the see. The third, of course, is this in vitro growth is, is, is just the opposite of what we are saying. The, the question is what can be the real reason and the real uh, difference between our, our two different experiments. One of them, I think, maybe uh, could be the explanation that so when we did this in vitro experiment, we always used the cells synchronized in G or G1 phase, and we checked the first couple of 24, 48 hours, and I also showed that after 12 hours, the cells can grow again in, with the same rate. And, and have you used that, or have you synchronized the cells before uh, uh, started uh, this experiment, uh, or, or used? Well, I think, I think so. I, I, cannot, I cannot answer you, certainly. Of this no mm -hmm. let's say no because mm -hmm. uh, if I can't be certain I don't know mm -hmm. however uh, the uh, the cells were taken from the reserve and were uh, frozen uh, and then we put them into in the same in the exact same time we put them in uh, to proliferate to grow so I think they were synchronized by the force of the uh, 
-hmm. I don't know exactly. I can't, uh, I can't respond to you with 100% uh, certainty. Mm -hmm. And the question is maybe the, the genetic background or some other, of course. so maybe some, some change it must be, okay. Of if course. we say, okay, we found that result that we yeah. should inhibit, you found no something was different mm -hmm. in your system mm -hmm. because you say that uh, maybe the stimulate, the time frame is different, I, I'm sure, because you, you followed it for several days, mm -hmm. these cells. So you, yeah. you cannot say that uh, the effect of deuterium depletion in the first 24 hours. No. No, you say no. the effect it after was, a couple uh, of days. 24, 48, 72, so until, until uh, confluence. Okay. Until okay. confluence. So, okay. And usually confluence is obtained at okay. four to six days. So okay. At my, the my end of the week, usually we stop the experiment. Okay. okay, my last comment would be that, of course, we have to be very worried about the safety because it's very important not to give something to people which can be dangerous. So I, I would say that maybe we don't have to worry about because we have made that type of safety experiment in the phase two double one clinical trial uh, and we have lots of experiment with cats and dog, uh, dogs and, and mm -hmm. after 15 years or 17 years follow up, we can say that we, I say, we, we never saw that, that uh, somehow that deuterium depleted water would stimulate the cancer grow on, on and stimulate the metastasis. Of course, we should figure out what's going on in your system. So this, okay. uh, this cautioning was made some, some long time ago and without being aware of the results of other studies. So. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Um, so th this is just out of curiosity. Do, do, do you know why uh, you cannot really deplete uh, below the 80 ppm in in vivo systems? No idea. No idea. So uh, the research was made, let's say, in an unsystematic way. There was no program dedicated to such an, a research. It could have been better explained if it would have been, let's say, part of a very well-developed program. But this was made, you know, uh, let's say, uh, from time to time during several years and uh, in, let's say, free slots of time of various connections and friends and things like those. So I cannot tell you exactly why does it happen. The only thing I can tell you is that it happens. Maybe it can go lower. Who knows? Is, is it possible that water is produced in our system uh, by various mitochondrial metabolism and mitochondrial whatever metabolism other and Krebs cycles? Just because of the ratio of water we consume and the water that is produced from various metabolites just so the, provide this the animals received only this water and the so-called exclusively dry food well it's not completely dehydrated that food is about 25 to 40 percent also humidity compared let's say with 90 percent other types of food so there is a certain amount of, uh, of water, of normal water in the, in the food. And in the air, we have lots of air vapors that we breathe in. And there are probably uh, significant sources of water around us which will not allow the, uh, the animals to go lower. Maybe it can. Maybe it takes more time. It was only two weeks, maybe three weeks something like this, two and a half, uh, during which those investigations were made. Maybe if you give it for six months or for a uh, year and keep it in a controlled environment, you might decrease it lower. I don't know. Now, about your um, research and comparing the pro rate of proliferation, I, 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 I'm, I'm really fascinated by the various results. And just... Um, um, it's really interesting how actually weight uh, affects various systems, and that, that is true with uh, uh, sporting activities. In Los Angeles, the Galaxy was uh, actually training with heavy soccer shoes, so when the actual game comes, uh, they will run faster. Now, what was interesting is that uh, really, truly, they, they, they fell in the first few minutes of the game because practically it's just such a different system after training in heavy shoes yet later they uh, sped up so the coach figured out that 
they cannot really switch shoes from practice to games and vice versa, and there's a little time to adjust to the uh, different conditions. And I think, and I'm going to talk about this later, um, there is a, an, an adaptive effect to, to light water or deuterium depleted water, which may eventually uh, speed up certain physiological processes. And uh, I, 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 I definitely think that actually alternating these ratios over time and finding out the appropriate alternating approach in biochemical systems and just knowing the details of how these switches may affect physiology and uh, that includes cell proliferation and various other physiological processes, eventually there is a scenario we can apply which is uh, biochemically established and clearly understood. Thank you.